In this course, we are going to make this super adorable tool belt, which you can use for anything, for tools, gardening, uh, painting, putting paintbrushes in there, whatever it is. And the tool belt has these two panels on either side. Of course, you can only make one if you want that slip onto a belt that we're gonna make that also has a parachute buckle. Of course, you can design these panels to also uh, fit onto a belt that you already own. You don't even have to make a belt if you don't want to. And you're gonna make these loops as well where you can just hang uh, whatever tool it is that you want. And then your two pockets are pretty large here with gussets which um, allow you to add more things in there. So check out this tool belt, how cute is it? I feel like everyone needs one. And no matter what task you are at, you know, you have this thing around your waist and it just helps you carry like more hands. So I would, if I were you, choose a fabric that's a little bit thicker, not your plain, thin uh, quilting cotton, like choose something a bit thicker, even a canvas. Because remember, um, if you're putting in tools in here that are uh, heavy and stronger, you may want just a little bit of a heavier weight fabric. So download that pattern and let's get it started. Let's start this tool belt. The pattern consists of six printed out pages and they are laid out and taped together like this. So you have page one, two, three, and under that four, five, and six. So you will tape it together just like I did and cut it out, not using your shears for fabrics, but your paper shears. To make the tool belt, you're gonna need these pieces cut out. So number one, the bag body. Piece number two, the pocket. Piece three, the loop. And piece four, the belt. Of course, you don't need to make a belt if you already have a belt that you're gonna slide these tool pockets onto, but I don't have a belt, and for the purpose of the tutorial, I am going to show you how to do this. Well, actually, I do have a belt. You know what I mean. I, I need to show you how to make it. Okay, let's move it along. I decided to make my tool belt out of this really pretty plaid with the backing of the belt, uh, this sort of orange or like burnt ochre or whatever you wanna call that. It's pretty, it is a little bit heavier weight, I figure for a tool belt, I don't know what kind of tools I'm gonna to be putting in there, but getting this autumn feel, I already see myself doing an autumn cleanup with these on my sides, can't wait. All right, so um, this is one that I have already created, and for everything here on the pattern, when I tell you to cut out four, it's to make two pockets of these or two pieces for your belt. So if you want, want to make only one, you're going to just cut out two instead of four. And here you're going to cut out one instead of two. But I'm going to move it along like as if we're making two. To begin cutting the bag body, I'm going to cut two out of this plaid. And here is my uh, selvage edge. So the grain line runs that way. So I'm going to place it here. But since I want to cut out two at once, I'm going to fold it in half, right sides together, and I'm actually going to use my pattern weights. And I'm going to repeat the same process with the back fabric that I'm deciding to use. All right, there we go. Try not to waste any fabric because I always use scraps for some creative project I come up with. I'm actually going to use a lot there. Okay, and we're good. This is a plaid, so I need to make sure the lines of the plaid design are actually straight. piece I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to fold it right sides together and place it down and cut it out and I'm going to use the same method to cut out my back fabric as well with the other piece not the pocket but the back body piece the bag body piece just like I mentioned 
I have my other fabric folded right sides together. My grain line is down here because I folded it, but it's going in the same direction, so we're good. I'm gonna cut out two of these as well. Whenever I cut on a larger piece of fabric, what I like to do is actually cut around the pattern so that I can sort of control my cuts a bit better, if that makes sense. So what I do is cut here, I cut it out, and then I really cut out my pattern. That, and now I cut. It just feels like I have more control and I get a cleaner cut. Of course, you do what makes you more comfortable. For the loop, I'm gonna cut two out. But for this one, I actually have to pin it down because it is a smaller pattern piece. My fabric's a little thick there, as you can see. And here we go. For the belts, what you have to do is place the end of, or the edge of the pattern that says fold line to the fold of your fabric, pin it down and cut it out. But as you can see here, I don't have enough fabric. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is actually cut out two of these, not on a fold and just sew them together. Um, it is an extra long belt, but just for the purpose of the tutorial, I wanna make sure I have this size, even though a smaller belt definitely will fit me. So I'm gonna cut two out, but you, you're gonna cut uh, on the fold. Here is what I've done with the fabric since I didn't have the correct length that I needed or enough of the length. I've sewn them together and just press this down with the iron, literally just down. I give it a tug, give it a shot of steam and it looks great and clean. And I don't mind that there's a seam there. So in the event that you don't have enough of the length of fabric, you can do the same exact thing. So since I am ready with my iron out, we're gonna move on to the pockets. What we're gonna do to the top of the pockets is create a hem. As I get it. All right, so the top, this is my wrong side, right side. You're gonna fold over about a quarter of an inch. And of course you can use your seam gauge if you're not sure what that looks like. So a quarter of an inch and you give it a press. And then you're going to repeat the same process and fold it over once more. If it doesn't stay down, you may want to decide to uh, put pins in it or even your fabric clips. I kind of tend to leave the iron on it for a few seconds. I know what will burn and what won't, and I know that this won't burn, so I have my fabric clips ready to keep it down. I sense that this fabric was not gonna behave, so I'm ready to pin or fabric clip it. Okay, so I'm gonna add the clips to keep it down. And I'm gonna repeat the same exact ironing of the hem onto my second pocket. to do is to sew down this hem so it stays in place. This is a fabric that is, I'd say, a bit heavyweight, but not too much. So just to be sure, I put a heavy duty needle onto my sewing machine, but I'm sure if I didn't, I would just uh, do just as fine because this machine is pretty strong and heavy. You may want to decide to do that if you're using like a very heavy canvas. My stitch is at two and a half, my stitch length. And I'm using a black thread just so that you can see my stitches. So I'm gonna back stitch on the end. 
and continue. And I'm staying very close to this edge. There really is no seam allowance. I'm just eyeing it. And I'm going to backstitch on the end. I'm going to repeat the same sewing on the other pocket. Once I've sewn the hem in place, I like to just give it a press on both sides and to the other one as well. thing after pressing down the hem is to take one of these back bodies and right sides facing you you're going to place the pocket right on top and you're going to see that the pocket is a bit longer and that's purposely for creating the space in our or the gusset in our pocket so you can fit more things in there and it won't be so stretched out so what you're going to do is you're going to line it up to the edge and you're going to pin it in place and you're gonna line it up also to the other edge and pin it in place. So if your cutting is right on, which I'm sure it is, you'll see that your curve and your edges line up. So at the moment, just pin the sides, making sure that the bottom edge here also lines up, but we're not pinning it down yet. So after you pin, you're going to need a ruler or a tape measure. I like to use my tape measure because I, when I work, I just have it around my neck. So it's like always around my neck here. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to find the center of this 18 inch pocket. So that would be nine inches. And when I find it, if I can get my <laughs> tape measure in the right spot, when I find it right there, I'm just going to put a pin in there, a straight pin, just to mark that this is round about the center of the pocket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it right down this way, push out the extra there, push out the extra here. And you want to also center it with this area. So this is 16, so we're going to bring it right to the 8. I'm going to push it over just a little. If it's not exact, it's okay. I wouldn't even stress it. And you're gonna place it right, you're gonna place the pin right in. Now, when you're creating these pockets, you can create them any way you want, meaning you can create a slimmer one, you can create a large one, this whole thing could be a pocket. Um, what I have here is I'm going to show you how to just make your two basic pockets. It really depends on what you or what tools you're going to be putting in here. So I'm going to show it to you this way. Of course, you can take this method and you can keep creating folds to make a thin pocket here. I don't know. Maybe you want to put your sunglasses or glasses there. You can just change it up, totally change it up. But like I said, I'll show you how to do two. So once this is in place, what I'm going to do is pin so that the bottom edge meets up. And I'm using my uh, full metal pins without the plastic head because I'm going to be ironing and pressing right on top. And I don't want them to melt onto my iron or my fabric. So once they're in place, you can see how easy it is to create these gussets. I'm literally just going to fold it and push it down in place. And same thing here. Now, if you find that it's a bit longer here, it's totally fine. You'll see that the pocket comes in a bit. That's fine. You can fix it here if you want it to be straight, which I do. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to fix mine up. Okay, and I'm going to lay my iron on it and give it a press. And I'm going to continue pressing, making sure these are straight. Notice how I'm always uh, just going in and giving it those final details, just tweaking it so it stays straight, just to keep it down and creating a crease. 
So once it's down, I'm gonna add a few pins in this direction as I have two in my hand there. I'm gonna add a pin here and a pin here just to hold it down. And what I'm gonna do now on my sewing machine is I'm gonna sew around the pocket area. I'm gonna sew from, I'm gonna start from this side and sew actually less than a quarter of an inch, as much as I can get to the edge, I will. And I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna make a um, back stitch there and go all the way around the pocket, right over the fold, all the way up to here and do a back stitch. Of course, I've switched the sides that I said that I would begin on, but it really doesn't matter. So I am leaving less than a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch on this end. The purpose of this stitch is just to hold this in place for when we put um, the cover on, or I should say the backing on, and we turn it right side out. Sometimes you have to lift your presser foot if your uh, folded over gusset area fold it out. Keeping it aligned as much as possible. And back stitch. And you're gonna do the same exact ironing and pressing to the other pocket piece. And so you have doubles. Our next step is to make a line, a sewing line all the way down here, closing down and keeping the two pockets down and separated. And it's pretty simple. You're just going to start up at the top, backstitch, and make your way down and backstitch. So I'm going to remove my pin. Put this right under the presser foot. And backstitch. And I'm going to make my way all the way down as, as I sort of open up the pockets. You want to make sure you don't sew your pocket down and you backstitch on the ends. And there you have sewn down your two pockets. After sewing down the center, the next thing to do is to make and form your loops. Again, another very simple process. So you're going to fold over about a quarter inch of of a hem so you can use your seam guide if you need and you're going to do this on both edges same thing on the other side And then you're going to fold directly in half and press. So I decided to make my loop the same exact color or the same exact fabric as the back of my uh, pocket, like what I'm going to put on the back here so that it stands out against the plaid and I see it. And I'm going to do the same thing with this loop and eventually we're going to go over to the sewing machine and put in a seam or I should say an actual sewing line down the center and you don't have to back stitch on the ends. I've gone ahead and just added that sewing line right down uh, the open edge so that it locks it in and doesn't move. So now what you want to do is you want to turn in the end and press it so it stays in place. Just a little bit of the edge. Both edges on both pieces because we're gonna sew it down and we want it to stay clean. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. And you'll do the same to the other loop. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your tool belt here or this panel. I like to call it a panel, even though I did call it a bag body. And you're gonna place the loop anywhere you want here, but it has to be two inches 
lower than the top. So with my tape measure, I'm gonna make sure I'm pl placing it lower than two inches. So I like to add mine towards the right here. You can add it in the center. It depends what you're gonna be hanging here, all right, onto your loops. So uh, I'm just gonna add mine to the right because that's where I like mine. And I'm gonna pin it in place. And once I pin it in place, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew the ends and I'm gonna sew all the way down and back it up all the way. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. And then I'm gonna make that same stitch anywhere along here. So what I typically do is put one right in the center. So I've turned this one loop into two loops. But of course, you are free to do as you please. You can add more, so you create as many sections of the loops as you want. So it's really good to know what you're gonna use your belt for. Who knows, maybe a hammer needs one loop and then this loop could be, could be anything. So as you sew this together, make sure if you see the end sticking out, you tuck it in because you want it to stay nice and neat in there. So let's go sew this. Okay, so this is ready to go. I'm gonna actually remove my straight pin and I still have my heavy duty needle in there so I shouldn't have an issue. And here we go. And I back up right over it. And if you're not sure that you can't see where you've sewn, you can always turn your sewing around so you can see your sewing line and cover it that way. And I do make a little back stitch right there. Of course, I kept my black thread in so you could see my sewing. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing right on this end. Just making sure, because with the plaid, you gotta really make sure <laughs> it's straight because the plaid will totally let you know if you're straight or not and you don't want a crooked project. So you see how a little bit of my edge there is sticking out. I'm just gonna go in and tuck it under. And because I can't see that well, I'm gonna turn it around and trace that over. And back stitch. And now I'm gonna put the same exact stitch mark in the center. I'm really happy with any size loop, really. And back it up. There we go. And now I'm gonna do the same thing to my other pocket piece. The next step, once your loops are in place, is to take the back of your pocket and to place it right sides together, right on top of what you've just created, your loop and your pockets. So that's right sides together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use my fabric clips. And I'm gonna pin all around or fabric clip it all around. And I'm gonna sew all the way around using a quarter inch seam allowance. So on the top here, I'm gonna leave an opening and you can mark it if you'd like and enough for at least my hand to fit in. So about four inches wide. And I'm gonna sew, do a back stitch there. And then I'm going to come around, work my way around, quarter inch seam allowance, come on up and stop at the other side of my opening. So the opening up on top. So back stitch on the end of the opening and go for it. going to pivot at the corner and as usual I'm using a two or two and a half stitch length
fixing here. And here we go. And backstitch. Oh, not yet. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm at the opening. I'm going to pivot. Here I was wanting to finish quickly. Hey, I'm only human, right? Here we go. And now I can say backstitch at the end, which is the other side of my opening. Once you've sewn all the way around and left an opening, what you're gonna do is you're gonna trim your corners and then you're gonna turn your bag right side out. Your bag, your panel, your pocket. <laughs> I've called it a few things, but I think by now you know exactly what I mean. And so once you turn it right side out, I love my awesome and handy dandy chopstick to help me out. So I'm gonna use my hand first to push out the rounded edges. And then when I get to the corner, whatever my finger can't do, I use my chopstick. There we go. And here as well. That one came out pretty well. So what you're gonna do is make sure all the seams are pressed out to the best of your ability. And then you're gonna give it a nice press. That always cleans it up. So with your iron set at the correct temperature, you give it a good press. All the way around, and when you get to the top, you're gonna turn the raw edges in so that it lines up and you have a nice straight line up here and you're gonna press. But of course I need to finish pressing all around the perimeter of this piece as well. All right, I'm gonna continue my work until it looks like my other pocket that I've gone ahead and completed. Once it's all pressed, what you're gonna do is turn it around and remember that this is still open, but we don't need to do extra sewing for that. And we're gonna turn it over two inches. So you can measure, uh, make sure you have two inches at least because our belt is gonna be one inch. So there needs to be enough room for the belt to move around. Now, if you're using your own belts, you're gonna to have to make a casing because this is what we're doing. We're sewing it down so this is open and it's called a casing so that we could slip through our belts. So if your belt is wider, you're gonna to have to make sure that you definitely fold it over more. And that's something to consider before you even place your loop on. So I'm gonna fold mine over at this point here and I'm going to pin it in place. Still with my metal pins because what I'm gonna do is um, iron and press, or press really with an iron over it. So I form a really nice uh, clean seam. Actually, I'm not forming a seam. What am I saying? I am forming a crease right up here. So when I press, I'm forming a crease. You sew a seam, Adriana, get with it. Okay, so I give it a good press. And I am going to sew with a straight stitch, back stitching on the end, all the way down straight, back stitching here. And that leaves me enough room for my one inch belt to move around. And I'm gonna do the same thing to my other panel. Before starting, I've actually increased my stitch to a three because I have a lot of uh, layers here. I have possibly more than four because there's a fold here. So who knows, maybe I'm going through six layers. So I decided to just take a little precaution. So I'm gonna go slow and guide it with the hand wheel. Okay, there we go. My machine is doing all right. Here we go. I can hear that it's really pressing through all those layers. 
going to straighten this out. And back stitch on the ends. I'm going to repeat this process on the other one. These pockets are completely done. And if you're putting it onto a belt, you're good to go. Just slide your belt right through and wear it. It's awesome. Put your tools in there, whatever it is you're going to use it for. But if you don't have a belt that you're going to use, watch how I show you how to make a really super simple belt. And we are going to add our parachute clip to it. So here is how I was starting my belt. What you're going to do is you're going to fold down uh, a hem on top and on the bottom about half an inch, not more than half an inch. You can even do um, about a quarter of an inch in between a quarter and a half. But if you're exact with a half, you're even better. So half an inch here, half an inch here. When you fold over, you get perfectly one inch and then it will fit wonderfully into your one inch uh, parachute clip. So you're going to continue it down and if you have your seam gauge you can give it a quick measure once in a while just to make sure you're keeping within the half inch range and if you remember i had to sew my fabric together because you know it's just one of those things i wanted to use this fabric and it wasn't enough so there's always an answer to make it work so I'm going to continue making my hems on the top and bottom and then folding it in half and giving it a final press. I press the entire length of my belt and before I sew down this edge and you can sew the top and the bottom edge. It's totally up to you what you do with it. You can even give it a decorative stitch. Have fun with it. But what I want to show you is how to finish off the edge so it doesn't fray. I open it up and I just turn it in a bit just a bit, a bit means probably quarter of an inch and I give it a press and then I fold it again so that it's nice and clean and it uh, won't fray as you wear your belt. And you're gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. I'm gonna hold it down. Repeat the same thing on the opposite side, and then we move over to the sewing machine to sew it down. So I'm going to close the end first, and I'm just going to sew the open edge. Even though I have a black thread and you can see it, I can always change my thread to coordinate so you don't see it, but I, I really don't mind. So this is what I'll do. I'll backstitch and close up that end, that thick end, and then just continue sewing down the edge. Just making sure we're lined up here, and here we go. I'm going to close up the end, the other end the same exact way. Now that my belt is completed, I'm going to take my parachute clip and on the female ends, I'm going to slip it through the opening here. Just pull it through. You might need to give it a little tug. It fits perfectly and I'm going to push it through this opening. And I'm gonna leave this opening unsewn and, I, and I'll tell you what I mean by that as I kind of pull this guy <laughs> through here. So this is the end that's gonna be adjustable, right? So you know how this works. You pull it, you adjust it however you want. Okay, and um, this is the end that I'm gonna sew in place, but I'm not gonna do that just yet because I wanna slip this through my utility belt or tool belt. I have gone ahead and slipped one of the tool belt pieces onto the belt. And now I'm gonna do the other one with you here. So this one, I actually just used the chopstick to push it through, but um, I, I didn't have a hard time doing that, but it may be difficult for some of you to do. So let me show you the correct way to do it. Using an even larger safety pin than this is a better idea. I just don't have one on hand, so I'm using a regular one. And I'm gonna feed it through the casing. 
just like I show you uh, in other projects if you've taken other classes with me here. So I'm just gonna feed it through, scrunching the fabric onto the safety pin. So you never really lose the safety pin in your hand. You just keep scrunching it on. It is taking me a while because this fabric is thick, but the goal is to feed it through to this end. get it through, you're gonna add the male ends of the parachute clip to this end of the belt. And this one, what we're gonna do with is we're gonna actually sew it in place. So I'm gonna add the flap to the back and I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna push it in through the back opening first, pull it through. I have a lot of layers of fabric there, so it's just gonna take a little bit of pulling maybe pushing through with something sharp. Okay. And then uh, what I meant by folding it over is this. I'm gonna fold it over. I'm actually gonna put it through once. And then I'm gonna fold it over and sew it to this side here. So the underside, that's the um, outside the side that you'll see against your waist so i'm gonna sew down i'm just gonna follow this line down and back stitch up so it locks this in place the clip sewn in place and i gave it a quick zigzag i decided last minute uh it is ready to go you can wear it you can adjust it and you have a great utility or tool belt hope you enjoyed this one and i'll see you in the next class